In this tutorial, we will review using the canvas, image sprites, and lists, and also introduce loops, a very important concept in computer science. We'll do all of this while making a pirate ship game that we'll call Get the Gold. So from the Drake App Camp website, click on App Camp Part 3, and scroll down to the Get the Gold section and download PirateShip.png and GoldCoin.png to your desktop. After you've done that, click on the App Inventor homepage and then click on the Create button. And we'll create a new project, call it Get the Gold. From here, let's quick update our screen and change its property for the title to be Get the Gold. Also, while I'm here, I can upload those files that I put on the desktop the goldcoin.png, and also upload the pirateship.png. If you'd like to, you can change the icon to be something like the pirate ship that might be appropriate. Um, then from here, click on the drawing animation drawer and pull out a canvas. We'll change the width of the canvas to be fill parent and the height of the canvas to be something like 350 pixels. This canvas is going to be the backdrop for our, for our game, and it's going to be kind of like the ocean sea. So I'm also going to change the background color to be this cyan color. Back to the user interface drawer, let's drag out a button. We'll rename that button the reset button. And change its text to be reset. I'm also going to use a clock, so let's drag out a clock. I'm going to change the name of that clock to be the timer clock. And initially, it's going to fire every second, every 1,000 milliseconds, which is one single second. I'm going to change that to be 5,000. So every five, five seconds, the timer clock will fire. Great. A couple other things here, back to the drawing and animation drawer. I'm going to pull out an image sprite on the canvas and rename this Pirate Ship. And as you might expect, I'm going to change the picture for the pirate ship to be the pirate ship.png. Good. And then the other thing I'm going to do is drag out lots of different image sprites, say five in total. Um, these are going to be the various gold coins that the pirate sh ship is going to try to capture as part of the game. And I'm not even going to even rename them. I'm going to call them, leave them image sprite one, two, three, four, and five. Good. So that is going to be the basic look for our app. At this point in time, go ahead and connect to your device. So far, the app looks something like this. So now let's click on the Blocks button to go to the Blocks Editor. The first thing we need to do is to create a new variable that's going to keep track of all those coins. So in this initialize a variable, call it coin list. In the the initialization process is simply just to create an empty list. The other thing we're going to do then is on, once that screen gets initialized, so under the screen one block here, I'm going to find that screen one initialize block. This is where we're going to populate that list with all those different image sprites. So we're going to add the items to the list at this point in time. So we'll add the items, and notice we've got that, that, that gear here we want to add five different items to this list. Good. So specify that this is going to be that coins list. And then we're going to get the image sprite one through five. So if I click on image sprite here, I can go all the way down to the bottom and actually get at that item, image sprite one. And I'm going to then copy and paste and just put all those items in here so they're all filled and just make sure that we now correspond to all the different image sprites that we have on the screen. Good. So the next thing I want to do is actually give all those image sprites the, the image, that gold coin image, so they appear as gold coins on my app. I, and I, I could do this, you know, you can imagine doing this with five different lines of code, say image sprite one dot set picture gold coin, image, image sprite two, so on and so on and so forth. 
But what I'm going to do is here is going to introduce what's known as a loop. So under the control block, I'm going to find this for each item in a list. So this code inside here is going to do this for each item inside of my global coins list. So let's go ahead and tell it to get that coins list. And so it's going to loop through that, this, this chunk of code and set that image sprite to be the goldcoin.png. So the way I can do that, if I scroll all the way down here, click on the any component element, I can get any image sprite. So any image sprite, and I want to get that picture. So set the picture of that particular item. In this case, I'll get that item inside that list and set it to be goldcoin.png, just like so. So now when the, the app is initialized, it's going to go through this loop for all the elements inside of my list and set it to be the, set the picture to be gold coin. So it saves a little bit of code um, by looping instead of doing this um, manually, setting every single uh, picture for every single image sprite. At this time, if you're to go to the connect button and reset your connection to your device, you would see that those image sprites now have assigned their picture as the gold coin, which is exactly what we want. At this point in time, we want to now change the ship so that we can fling it so it can go and try to capture these gold coins. So I'm gonna go back to the designer window and recall that if we have on the pirate ship, there are three properties of significance when it comes to moving an item. The heading, the interval, and the speed. The heading is a number between 0 and 360. If the ship's heading is 0, it's going to be going to the right. If it's 90, it'll be going up. If it's 270, it'll be going left. I'm sorry, if it's 180, it'll be going left. If it's 270, it'll be going down. The interval means that every 100 millisecond is going to be updating its position. And the speed corresponds to the number of pixels that will move every single interval. So I'm going to initially set my speed to be 5 pixels. So the ship's going to travel 5 pixels. So that's, that's going to be kind of constant. Going back to the blocks editor, I'm going to click on the pirate ship and find the when pirate ship flung block. Now I notice there are six different arguments here. The X and Y correspond to the initial starting position when the user presses down on the pirate ship. The speed is how fast they flung it. The heading is the direction that they flung it. And of course, we also have access to the X and the Y velocity. So in this point in time, we're just going to change the heading of the pirate ship when it's flung. So scroll down on the pirate ship and find the set heading block. And then mouse over that heading argument and attach the two. Great. At this point in time, if you fling your ship, it'll change the direction. It'll keep on going at a constant speed. Notice that it will get stuck in the corner and it doesn't really bounce off of walls. So let's change that. If we click on the pirate ship again, we can find the when edge reached block. And when that happens, all I want to do is simply have the pirate ship bounce off of the walls. So scroll down and find when pirate ship dot bounce, call pirate ship dot bounce, and we'll bounce it off of that edge. So now notice the pirate ship will essentially bounce off of an edge of the app. And also I can fling it in any direction I really want to. Also notice that the pirate ship is essentially sailing through those coins. So now let's implement some collision detection. All right. So click on the pirate ship and find the when pirate ship collided with block. Now one way to implement this is to check to see if the pirate ship collided with image bright one and also to check to see if it collided with image sprite 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. You can see how that could create a huge amount of code here. We're going to do that in a much more efficient way using loops. So we're going to go to the control block and 
find this for each item inside of a list block and get that coin list. So this is going to keep on looping inside of this block for every single item in that coin list, namely for all the image sprites. I still want to check to see if our pirate ship actually collides with one of those image sprites. So I'm going to put an if statement inside of here. And then in the pirate ship block, if you scroll down, I can call if the pirate ship is dot colliding with something else. In this case, that something else might be that particular item, the image sprite. If that's true, if it does collide with one of those image sprites, I want to set that image sprite item visibility to be false. So down here on any component, I can get any image sprite and scroll down and set the image sprite visibility, very bottom here, set the image sprite visible of this component, that item, to be equal to false. It's going to make that image sprite visibility disappear. All right, so let's take a look. So now if the pirate ship hits a coin, it goes away. Great. So that's collision detection. The next thing to do is when that reset button is pressed, reestablish the visibility for all those coins. So when the reset button is pressed, we'll click on reset button. When that reset button is clicked, we're gonna do the similar thing. Loop through all the coins in the list and check and change its visibility to be true in this case. So again, I'm gonna go and get that loop for each item inside of that variable list of my coin list. I'm gonna change its visibility for that particular image bright to be equal to true. So set the image bright for that particular item, in this case to be true. Great, so now almost all of my coins are gone. Now they are gone, if I hit the reset button, they should all reappear. Perfect.